Welcome to this special episode of the Underground Bunker Podcast. I'm back with a- Apostate Alex because things are happening and we needed to check in with you again. <clears throat> the latest news I had and that we mentioned on the bunker yesterday was that you managed to get a road closure happening on Friday so that you could have your protest, which is really amazing because I think there might have been some implications for the Scientologists themselves trying to get into the place. So please tell us all the ramifications of that and if anything has changed. Yeah, so um, firstly, thank you for having me back and hello to everyone that watched our, if you haven't watched our um, previous interview, go and check that out because I think that will provide a lot of context to what we're talking about today. Um, the in uh, the protest that's happening on, we're, we're going to be there all weekend, so Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Um, I'm expecting a smaller turnout on the Saturday and the Sunday. The Friday really is the big day because that's the big IS event. I requested um, permission from Mid-Sussex District Council and the police to go ahead with a protest march. Now, in UK law, you can do a static protest anywhere on public land at any time. No problem. You don't have to give anyone any notice. It's a right to do that. But if you want to sort of move around as part of a march, you have to give the police six days notice and they have to kind of sign it off to say, yes, that's fine. Even if your march is, you know, in the middle of a field and you're not getting in anyone's way, you still legally have to inform them. So I informed the police um four weeks ago that I wanted to do a march on the Friday and I said look I'm giving you plenty of notice and we want to march from the centre of town in East Grinstead down the high street along Turners Hill Road turning left onto St Hill and arriving outside the manor where we will then be stationed for the whole day on the Friday and then we'll return for a static protest on the Saturday and Sunday. I got the approval for that to go ahead from the police there are conditions, though, because obviously the the St. Hill Manor is in the middle of the countryside, so there's no public footpaths or walkways. I mean, there are there are ways of getting there, but I wanted to be walking in the road, right, making a big statement. So I had to then apply for a road closure, which is Mid-Sussex District Council. Um, there's actually two ways of going about a road closure um, without getting into the ins and outs of it. One of them I applied and they came back to me straight away and said, we can't do it because you have to give at least six weeks notice and this is only four weeks. So the other way of going around it is the local council. And so they said, yes, no problem. Um, They closed the road, St. Hill Road, from 2 p.m. till 8 p.m., which would then allow us to do the march in the road and be protesting outside St. Hill in the road and not have to worry about staying on the verge and the footpath and all of this. The town centre roads were never going to be closed. We're going to stick to the footpath there. That's fine. But it does give us the opportunity to march and for safety as well. You know, we've got dozens of protesters expecting to show up. It's a country lane. And I was just concerned about, you know, cars going past at stupid speeds and so on. You know, if we just close the road, then we know that we're going to be safe. There's going to be less traffic. And that was approved. Now, Scientology, the rugby club, the sports club, the people that live on the road have a right of access. So they, even if the road is closed, they have a right to access their property. So it was never going to completely stop all traffic to St. Hill. However, it does kind of create a little speed bump for them in the, you know, it's a little bit of a problem. And so I've been back and forth in negotiations with the council and with the police about how this is going to work Um, and the point I'm trying to make is that I don't want to cause disruption to their event I don't want to prevent anyone going to this event on their private property that's their right they're allowed to do it we just want to be able to protest have our voice heard and be safe in doing so Um, so the road closure was approved and then there was a lot of talks about how that's going to work out. And the last update I gave you was that there was going to be a roadblock at either end of the road. Um, Residents and people attending the sports club and so on would have to tell the police who would be standing at the roadblock that that's what they're doing and they would be allowed onto the road. And anyone attending the Scientology event would be given a pass, which they would then show, and that would give them access to the road. Um, And the idea that I was pitching was that they would be escorted or at least limited in speed so that they're going at three, four, five miles an hour or whatever, so that they don't kind of have a, a um, uh, they, they don't present a threat to us protesters 
even if we're not standing in the road, you know, on the rare um, possibility that someone is in the road or someone's driving and, you know, takes the corner too quickly or something. I just wanted to mitigate all the risks. And that was all approved and all going ahead, no problem. Now, yesterday, I had a really good conversation with my contact at Sussex Police, um, and he was asking a few questions, and we'll get to the road closures in a second, because I think this is the first thing that I heard. Um, he came to me and he said, so the Scientologists have um, raised a concern with us about one of the messages of your protest. And I was like, okay, what's that? And he said, they've they've raised a concern, something to do with a symbol um, of like a fist, you know, that says United Against Scientology. And they said that that is, um, you know, hugely discriminatory and offensive as a symbol in their religion. And so I said, well, look, context, IESprotest.com is the website, the protest and our symbol is a fist and it says United Against Scientology. That's what they're talking about. But as a former Scientologist, I can confirm 100% that there is no symbolism in Scientology whatsoever. Like, you know, a cross in Christianity upside down could be seen as offensive and Satanism. Like, this isn't a symbol in Scientology. It's not like a symbolic thing. They are just offended at the message that we have. Um, and the police officer kind of laughed and he said, yeah, look, I can I can see that as long as it's not actually a, an offensive symbol in their belief system, you're allowed to have an opposing view. And I said, yeah, look, it's not like we're creating T-shirts and stuff that say, you know, we want all Scientologists to whatever. We're just saying we're against this organization um and that's different to being insulting or harassing or offensive and i think the police kind of understood that and they took that away and i was kind of waiting to hear back on that but i just found it interesting that they were trying to derail the vision and say you if anyone shows up wearing a t-shirt with a fist on it that says united against scientology that is hugely offensive and we should get respect as a religion and that's harassment and so on and i thought that in itself was an interesting update from from yesterday but um yeah what are your thoughts initially before i ramble too much Tom? well i'm i'm just um uh, going through the <clears throat> trying to remember let's see did Zeno ever raise a fist or um <laughs> I mean, I think it'd be more of offensive if you'd put a clam. You know, <laughs> I can't Absolutely. think of a fist being used in any of Scientology's uh, literature of yeah. any sort. So they're making that up. I mean, I can I can imagine them trying to make the case that that's too militant and threatening. And apparently, they tried to make that case, but like he's, you know, it's just a symbol meaning uh, solidarity and we're in this yeah. together so uh it, they're 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 just trying to find whatever they can to get the police uh thinking that you're doing something no good exactly and i think one of the reasons i chose the fist in that way is because it's a universal symbol for standing up for what you believe in and solidarity like you say liberty human rights which is one of the largest human rights organizations charities in the uk they use the fist as a symbol so i thought look this isn't an aggressive or offensive symbol it just says you know we are united we're standing up for what we believe in and that's exactly what what we mean by that symbolism but i think it was really interesting that they kind of went down that line of like you know we are personal offended because the law in the uk is very clear um about what is allowed and what isn't allowed as per who is offended by it so if we're standing there chanting you know scientologists are all liars that could be seen as offensive and therefore not okay whereas if we are standing there chanting you know we don't like scientology or we want to help you that's okay because we're not personally attacking people and they were trying to make the argument that this symbol is personally attacking them and therefore it wouldn't be allowed so i just thought that was a really interesting route for them to go down um, but they're taking that back and kind of reviewing it. And I've asked for some further guidance. I also sent them a link to um, during the anonymous protest. I don't know if you are aware of this or reported on it, but there was a teenager who was um, protesting outside London Org and was holding a sign that said Scientology is a cult. 
Um, and he was arrested by the police because they said, take down the sign. This is offensive arrested liberty human rights got behind him and it all ended up being dropped because it was then advised by the crown prosecution service that this is not a personal attack or harassment or abuse which is illegal and he's perfectly within his right to say his opinion is that Scientology is a cult and not a religion so that was all dropped and I sent that to the police and I said look this is a clear um, example of how Scientology have tried to claim this before and it's a really thin line between a different uh, like an opposing opinion and a personal attack and what we absolutely don't want to do is attack Scientologists well and and let's look at the irony here because you're having to make an argument that a fist or calling it a cult is opinion and that that you have the right to do that at this exact same moment in Los Angeles, that's the case Scientology is making against Leah Remini and saying that, yeah, we called her a racist and a Nazi and all this stuff, but you know what? It's, it's not provably false because it's opinion. So they're doing something that's far more offensive in LA against Leah Remini and arguing that they can do that all day in a court case while in London, they're telling you, oh, officer, we can't see these things said about us. They're so offensive. You know, typical <clears throat> hypocrisy by the Church of Scientology that counts on people never comparing notes in different parts mm -hmm. of the country, different parts of the world. And they're, they're certainly not helping themselves either, because I've gone into this with the best intentions and said, look, we want to have our voice heard. We have a right to protest but we don't want to cause disruption to your event. We don't want to be storming your property or like we, we want you to be able to do your event, but we just want to be present and have our voices heard. And I've gone into this with good faith. And I think the police and the council are very aware of this. You know, I sent an email to Graham Wilson, who's the head of OSA in the UK and said, look, I know we have opposing views, but I want to organize the protest so that it causes minimal disruption to you and your event. So could you please let me know, you know, roughly how many people you're expecting, the sort of times you think it's going to be busiest on the road, because then we can organize ourselves to cause minimal disruption to that. And obviously I didn't get a reply. I wasn't expecting one. But from day one, I've been very clear that, look, we are not trying to cause offense here um and then scientology issue a statement attacking me you know i'm a bigot and all of this and i think they're just shooting themselves in the foot because i'm being very clear in that we have a compassionate message and this is all we want um we're not attacking you know the, the church individuals or whatever we're just saying that we want the abuse inside the church to stop and we want people to know that there's an option there for them if they want to leave or escape and that's it. And I think it's it's really clear, black and white, if you look at all of the press around this, that the church are just making it worse for themselves because we haven't done anything that, you know, paints them in a bad light in terms of their actions. We're trying to make it easy, as easy as possible for them, which I just find funny, you know. Now, uh, were there some other attempts to mess with this whole uh, thing going yes. on? Tell yes. So this now moves on to the road closures. Now, late last night, I was informed of a tweet from a local councillor who works on, I think it's the West Sussex District Council. Now, I haven't had any communication with this person and she has been tweeting several times throughout the last few days about the road closures, because once we announce the road closure, it gets put on a public website um, and she raised a concern. Now, there was a clerical error in that the, the uh, first road closure announcement was actually for the wrong day. They announced it to be on the Saturday, the 4th, not the 3rd. So she tweeted saying, we've just heard that the road there's a road being closed for the Scientology event um, on Saturday. And I'm concerned because of the rugby club and all of this and blah, blah, blah. Firstly, she didn't understand that it was the protesters requesting the road closure, not Scientology. Oh. Secondly, that it was on the Friday, not the Saturday. And thirdly, that there has been a consultation period and access is not going to be restricted to the people who live and work on the property or on that road. So she was kind of misinformed anyway, but has been tweeting about it. And throughout the last few days, when they've updated it and got the date correct and all of this, she's been tweeting. And I've not engaged because, you know, it's fine. She's allowed to comment on it and raise her concerns. 
Now, last night, now the last conversation I had with the police was yesterday afternoon and it all sounded great. And they were asking me for updates and, you know, how many people were expecting and the route. And we were talking logistics of how we're going to march and how we're going to control the traffic on the road. Um, and um, this person tweeted before this conversation I had with the police, but I didn't see it until afterwards, um, saying that I've now been informed um, by Mid Sussex District Council that the road closure has been cancelled. It is no longer happening. Um, and Sussex police have been in talks with the Church of Scientology and there is a traffic management plan in place um, and the road is now open to the public on the Friday which is news to me because I've not been informed of any of this. Um, and Sussex police last conversation had with them was talking about the road closure and the logistics. So I contacted Miss Sussex District Council this morning who confirmed, uh, yes, the police have contacted us and said that we need to cancel the road closure. And I can't comment any further because that was their decision. And I said, interesting, okay. And so I spent today speaking to my contact to the police and I said, I've been informed by the council that the police have cancelled the road closure. What's going on? Because I've done that to you know, protect the, you know, the safety of the protesters. And there was a plan in place to minimise disruption. Um, and the police officer came back to me and said, I'm not aware of the police requesting this road closure to be cancelled. This is the first I've heard of it. Um, it may be that there's a different department of the police who are local police or something that have done that, but I'm not aware of this. Let me investigate. So it is possible that either Scientology have got in somehow and managed to disrupt this, you know, in a, a, a not OK way, in a surreptitious way. Or um, it is possible that the police did uh, request a cancellation of the road closure, but it's just a different department that we've not been in contact with. But either way, I think it's incredibly strange considering um, we've got a plan in place. It was all approved by the higher ups at the police and the council. And we're all looking really good. And now suddenly this spanner has been thrown in the works. So the update is that I'm currently awaiting a response from the local policing team as to what's going on. Um, either way, I've not been told the protest can't go ahead. I've not been told the march can't go ahead. The advice I was given was even if the road isn't closed, you can still march in the road. We have marshals and such in place anyway, as a matter of safety to ensure, um, you know, the, the cars and stuff that do that are around aren't a danger. So he just advised, you know, a few things about, you know, keeping to one side of the road or doing it between this time and this time to try and even if the road isn't closed to try and still be able to do it. So it's not at this point in time disrupting our plans other than just being a minor headache. But I think it just goes to show how Scientology have such a strong relationship with the council and with the police that they are able to have these conversations and result in things like this happening before even consulting the organizer of the event who has requested the closure of the road and the people in the police who are involved in that whole organization. So I think it's an interesting one. I'm going to obviously find out more as time goes on, but it just goes to show how hard Scientology are trying to disrupt this event in any way they possibly can. Absolutely. I mean, they, they've cultivated these relationships over many years. <clears throat> you, you went in the front door, you followed the the rules that are posted on the wall, you know, whatever it is, uh, apply here, apply here. And, you know, we talked about before that you have primacy. They had just not bothered to do any of this. And so you got there first, you're following the rules, but they have relationships and they will call somebody up and say, look, this is an issue. We got to do something and things will be taken care of behind the scenes. So uh, I guess we don't know the outcome yet. At this point, we're recording <clears throat> on Wednesday evening. I'll be posting this Thursday morning by then probably there will be an update and maybe I can add something onto this video at the end. But, uh, you know, that on the one hand, I'm kind of pissed off about it because you have followed all the rules. You've talked to all the right people. You've set up a great thing. And now it sounds like maybe Scientology is doing what it does and it's pulled some strings behind the scenes, but we don't know. We don't know. Maybe there's some misconception going on, miscommunication going on. I'm sure you'll get to the bottom of it. Wow. 
I think my main concern as well is when you put this into the bigger picture of when they organized the event and they didn't give the notice they needed to, that breach of condition of their premises license is considered legally as a serious offense that is punishable by a £20,000 fine or six months imprisonment or both. And the fact that the response to that that I got was we sent them a letter advising them uh, you know, and kind of giving them a slap on the wrist. That indicated to me that they've got a fairly good relationship with the council anyway. And now this has happened. The question that I now have, which I'm going to be exploring after the protest, is what is the nature of that relationship? Because they've clearly gotten away with a slap on the wrist when they should have had a much more serious implication because of the breach of premises license conditions and now we have this kind of meddling going on it indicates to me that they are much more intertwined and involved with east uh, east sussex uh, sorry mid sussex district council than perhaps we anticipated um considering that as you said i was in there first i have priority i've been playing above board and they've just been trying to meddle but look it's nothing surprising this is exactly what we expected to happen we know this is it straight out of scientology's playbook it's not like this is shocking news um but it's just interesting to see how they are going about these um you know attempts to kind of derail our plans the good news is we haven't been cancelled at this point in time. We can still go ahead. I've had a number of emails and phone calls today from major news channels and news organisations here in the UK that are wanting to arrange interviews and filming the cut and covering the activities. Um, so it has definitely got a lot of reach and our registrations for people attending the event has uh, have increased we've had like 10 15 more people in the last 24 hours sign up to say they want to come and also there are people who are going to show up on the day that haven't registered to come so i think this is going to be a much larger event than perhaps scientology are anticipating it's certainly going to get a lot of pressure um on them and it's going to get a lot of um press attention as well i think this is just a major flap considering uh their situation and i'm definitely not in their good books <laughs> which i well, just I find you pick, i think yeah. you picked a great event because the more i think about it the more this is kind of like you know dave's big homecoming in a way but dave's big coming out uh they've been um you know they've had some really bad press over the last i mean they always have bad press but it's been really bad the last couple of years with Dave uh, being declared evasive uh, in the trafficking lawsuit in Tampa, you know, evading process servers, the Danny Masterson case, uh, and this idea that it just seems like Dave's in hiding in Florida as Scientology struggles to recover from the pandemic. And so here's his opportunity to say, no, nah, we're doing great. It's the same as before. We're expanding like crazy. And one sign of how big it is Another thing that you found out and, and shared with us, thank you very much, and that was this flyer announcing that Jenna Elfman is going to MC the charity concert Sunday night. Now, listen, this is a big deal. I know she's not a big name. You, you tell me, because I'm hearing from some of my English readers that she's not a big name over there. How do you know? Did you know much about her? The first I ever heard of Jenna Elfman was after I left Scientology. Uh, reading stuff about her being a celebrity Scientologist. She's not a well-known name here at all. But you have to consider the IES event is international. People attending it will be flying in from the States and from Europe. So this event isn't just to attract British Scientologists. This is for worldwide. And if they can claim fame or celebrity status from anyone, they will. So it's not like they're trying to win over British people. They're trying to win over the American people that are Scientologists. And I gather she's a much bigger name over there than she is. She well, she's, a, she's one of their bigger names. And also, we've always pointed this out for years, one of the most hardcore, one of the most militant. She's, uh, there's a handful like Tom Cruise, Nancy Cartwright, Jenna Elfman, who are known for keeping the other celebrities in line. Like they, they will dress you down if you're not doing what, you know, it needs to be done. The other thing I wanted, I, I was that I, I was equating it to was when Leah's show started, there was kind of a surprisingly small response from Scientology. But once the day it was announced she was getting a second season, wow. It was like Dave just, I mean, all those websites popped up, the horrible videos about her. 
something about that second season being announced really set him off. And another thing I noticed was in the publications and the various publications that we get copies of, all of a sudden, Nancy Cartwright, um, uh, Jenna Elfman, uh, Kelly Preston, Kirsty Alley, Marisol Nichols, all of these well-known in America, female Scientology celebrities, were suddenly making a big deal about getting new certificates, generally OT7 or OT8, all, all the time. And, I, you know, I've been watching this enough years to know that this was unusual. And I, I just perceived that Dave cracked the whip and said, look, Leah Remini's out there generating all this in feta for us. We need to get out and make an opposite show for our people. And so, you know, these those women did that. So the fact that Jenna Elfman is showing up at the IAS, and I can't remember her ever going over there. She may have in the 90s or something, but I don't remember. I wonder if we're not going to get a strong celebrity showing at this event because it reminds me of what he had them do, like I said, six or seven years ago when Leah was 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 doing so much damage. So the fact that I, you know, again, I know English English our English viewers and readers may not think it's a big deal that Jenna Elfman is going to be there. I think it is a big deal, and I think it suggests we may see some other celebrities showing up to this thing who maybe normally wouldn't go to an IAS. And of course, I'm thinking of Tom Cruise. He he did go to the IAS events there. Um, in the mid to, you know, like 2015, 2017, he was going. So we, we could see him there, but it would be really interesting if, if people like Nancy Cartwright started coming over who, do, who wouldn't normally come or, um, you know, maybe somebody from the Rabisi clan, it'll be, I hope we get some reports. I hope we get some sightings. And of course the British tabloid press is very good at their paparazzi keeping an eye for people. So that could be really interesting to me. Um, I think, yeah, I, I agree. I think this is all evidence to show that there is a lot riding on this event anyway, irrespective of the protest and the activism. Uh, this was always going to be a landmark IES event because David Miscavige needs to send a very strong message to Scientologists that he is still here. He's still at the, you know, at the helm of this thing. They're still expanding. And even though they've kind of not really heard from him much over the last few years and there hasn't been an IES event, like there was this is a bold statement in and of itself so i think we were always going to expect a larger turnout a larger celebrity following and so on and i think it's going to be really interesting to see the response that we see from the church afterwards based on the press and attention that this protest activity is going to get because already you know we had an article in newsweek and the guardian you know newsweek have 100 million uh, monthly viewers on their website the guardian has about 110 and a number of other um publications as well have covered the protest before it's even happened this is the biggest news story in the uk at least about scientology for several years and it hasn't even happened yet based on the press that have kind of contacted me that want to cover the protest it's certainly going to get scientology um you know talked about more in the uk than it has for a long time but i think what's really interesting to note is scientology have made this very clear that this is the greatest gathering of the scientologists and this is going to be a recap on the you know global work we've done and salvaging humanity in the last four years well if the work that they've been doing has been so successful and so you know game changing for humankind why are the press not covering that why are the press covering you know the few dozen people that are going to be gathering outside with some signs you know i think that's an indication of the status of scientology in the public their public image and their public um you know reputation in the UK at least um, and I think it's going to be really interesting they are not going to like the fact that we've got some major TV channels showing up and we've got some great news articles lined up like this is going to get a lot of attention and the turnout is huge as well it's it surprised me that the number of people that have registered and said they're going to come is I thought we'd get 15 20 people and I would have been happy but we are looking at you know, between 50 and 100 people showing up on Friday, there's always going to be some dropouts and some people who don't show up and so on. There's also going to be people show up that haven't told me beforehand. So we, we're not going to know until the day, but it's it's a lot larger than I ever expected. And I think that in itself sends a very clear message to Scientology that, yeah, you've been away for a few years and you're coming back, 
But actually, in that time, the opposition has grown too. And we are going to give David Miscavige a very warm welcome um, on his return to the UK, considering the human trafficking and abuse allegations made against him in the US. We are not happy that he's thought it was a great idea to come on a jolly to the UK, put on a big fundraiser and take home millions of dollars um, in donations all here in the United Kingdom, uh, when those are the things he's being accused of. It's not okay. We don't want it to happen. And that's the message we want to send. We don't care about your beliefs. You can believe in what you want, right? But what we do have a problem is with is, you know, people having ethics protection and therefore not um, suffering any consequences for raping and abusing people, Danny Masterson, and the church not only saying that's okay and covering up, but defending it. That's he's not the only person that has done that or has gotten away with it. And that's what we have a problem with. And we have a problem with the way that the church is engaging its activity, its members and, and doing its activities here. We want to send a message that that needs to stop. And the key thing to Scientologists is if you need help, if you want to leave, we are here to help. There's a whole community. There's an Aftermath Foundation. There's, there's loads of people here that just want to support and love you and care for you because that is a message that we really want to get through to people who might be questioning or doubting. Um, so that's the point of the protest. We've got our banners and signs and placards here ready to go. Um, and it will be interesting to see how it turns out on the day. Yeah, but man, they got churros. They got, they got churros and they got hot drinks and they got burgers. <laughs> you got me another flyer. And a bagpiper. Yeah. They got, you got me another flyer that shows all the uh, fun things that are going on so people can come out. And I mean, it's a big commitment. I mean, these people are being asked to fly. A lot of them will come from the U.S. Uh, it's you, you can tell it's all last minute. They have to drop everything, arrange travel, come over for three days. Uh, I think you said to me before that virtually every hotel in 20 miles is all booked now. Yes, uh, I uh, I actually also recently someone I, I forgot to tell you this. You'll love this. Someone contacted me yesterday, um, saying that their um their one of their family members got a phone call from Scientology, asking them to come to the IES event. Now the problem is this person hadn't had any communication with Scientology in fifteen years, and was shocked to hear from them, especially considering the person who um, told me who they're related to um, is like known as an, not necessarily an enemy, but someone who's not in good standing with the church. So the fact that they are reaching out to people who've had no communication with the church in that long and saying, come to the IES, it does eke of desperation. And I think, um, you know, they are definitely scrambling to try and fill those seats up. So it'll be very interesting to see how many people show up on the day. Well, it doesn't matter. They're going to say 10,000 showed up anyway on the press release, you know. Yeah. But uh, I don't I don't know if there's any way you can estimate it by, by how many people you see drive in. But, um, yeah, they just use very, you know, they use these short angle lenses to make a, a small crowd look big. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I, of course, I'm curious about details. Like, normally on one of these events, uh, one of the nights would be celebrating the Freedom Medal winners. And, and in order to do that, they would have SMP go out and make these really elaborate videos about these folks. And so I'm curious who they chose, what supposed the work they're supposedly doing. Um, and then, of course, for me, the most interesting thing about the whole weekend are the trophies for the big donors. And I'll be really interesting to see who's going, who's going to show up and who's going to get trophies this time. It may be a while. What what they generally do is they put it all out in Impact Magazine about a month and a half later. So we may have to wait for a while. But uh, you know, I'm just one. I'm just wondering: is this, you know, I, you know, any normal organization, <clears throat> the leader would walk out and say, "Look, folks, we've been through an unprecedented event. The whole world was locked down. We've had a very special challenges. We're going to do things differently tonight." Uh, we're going to talk about how, you know, some people that have done some good things. But no, it's I'm telling you, it's going to be the same dog and pony show. They're going to say, we've had greater expansion in the last five years than we've had in the 50 years before. I mean, all the same slogans they use. Uh, and I don't know, some for some of these people, that stuff works. Alex, can you help us understand how that works? Yeah, I think, look, I can't, I'm not 
I'm not a Scientologist now and I'm not going to be there. So I'm not in the mindset having experienced a pandemic. But what I can say is from my estimation based on understanding how I felt when I was a Scientologist, if I was still in now, I think it would be more of a case of like, we are all a bit down in the dumps. We've all been through a lot. And now people are looking for answers. Like we're kind of over the big hurdle of the pandemic. We're looking for like, what's the next step? We need focus. We need direction of like, okay, let's move on. Let's go into the next chapter. How are we going to look forward into expansion and getting back to normal and back to basics and so on? That's what I think I would want as a Scientologist. And I think that's the message that people are going to be um, getting at the IES event. I think Dave Miscavige is not going to dwell on the past because that's end theta. That's bad news. It's very much going to be like, look at how great we are. And yes, we cl-. he's not even going to say we closed all of the orgs, but you know that is what happened. But he is going to say we sprung into action and we distributed X amount of million booklets about how to stay well. We got this letter from the government saying thank you for your support. And that just shows that even in bad, horrible times, we as Scientologists are proactively doing something about it. And look, we're going to have these new orgs opening in this year and this year. Like I can almost picture the speech almost word for word. And as a Scientologist, I probably wouldn't go in there thinking or being critical about let's look at the reality of the last few years. And he says that we're expanding. We gave out these booklets, but really what does that mean? My, my course room is empty. Um, he might say we're expanding, but you know, are we really, cause there's less people. Like, I'm not going to be thinking of those things as a Scientologist. I just want to be inspired and I want to be reassured that what I'm doing is the right thing. And this is Scientology coming back with a vengeance. And I think that's what Dave Miscavige is going to deliver. And that's the problem with the cognitive dissonance that occurs in Scientology is you're kind of in your little, you know, shell and your little bubble. And you, a lot of people, sunk cost fallacy, have invested so much time and energy and money into this thing that it's really hard to accept that perhaps Scientology is shrinking and perhaps this large protest outside, which is the biggest one that's happened in the UK in 15 years, maybe that indicates that we're not expanding or we're not doing the right thing. You you just kind of put your blinkers on because you don't want to accept that because you're just focusing on the next step and going, okay, what's real for me in my reality? My reality is we're through the pandemic I've got this book that I'm studying and I'm doing this and I've got this problem and this problem and I'm going to go to the org and I'm going to sort it and I'm going to approach tomorrow as a new day and I'm just going to focus on that step by step and look Scientology is expanding and it's great that gives me the reinforcement and the encouragement to carry on that's what I would be thinking I can't speak for all Scientologists but that's how I would imagine things would be going down in the mind uh, the minds of many. You're going to be out there from like two to seven. Have you, are you working on logistics to make sure your folks have got something hot to drink and in a way to sit down for a minute and things like that? Absolutely. So we're meeting in East Grinstead town center at 2 PM. We'll have a little briefing because I want to make sure everyone's aware on safety precautions and what to expect and so on. Half past two, we'll begin the March. We'll be arriving at St. Hill probably around half past three. It's a 45 minute walk, but you know, it might take a little bit longer. Half three will then be their station until the event starts. So the original plan was until 8 p.m. But realistically, I reckon we're likely to be done at 6 or 7 p.m. Depending on, you know, once everyone's in the event that and the traffic has stopped, there's no point in us standing outside and waiting. So we'll, we'll play it by ear. It will start to get dark. It will start to get cold. So, you know, we're going to have some music and we're going to have good times and some jokes. We're going to keep ourselves moving around. Um, anyone that wants to come, please wrap up war. It might be wet and windy. It is England in November after all. But, you know, we've got a few plans in place to make sure everyone stays, um, you know, awake and alert and has a good time. Um, And we've also got a few um, logistical things in place if people need to take a time out or a breather. You know, if they want to go and sit in a car and heat up, for example, we can do that. Um, But ultimately, we're only going to be there for a few hours and then we'll all head to the pub afterwards, warm up, get a nice drink um, and maybe some food and uh, and recap on on how the day went. That sounds great. All right. 
Well, and at this point, uh, although Thursday is horrible and Saturday and Sunday look a little bit dicey, it looks like you've got a dry Friday. So I think you might, uh, this might work out really well for you. I think so. It looks like there might be a few showers in the afternoon, but the the worst of the storm is over. It looks like it's going to be quite bright and sunny. I think it'll be fun. And look, there's going to be plenty of us there having a good time. There's going to be jokes and laughter. We're not here to have a, we're not going to be there to be miserable and grumpy. Like we're there to have a good time and say, look, we are here. This is our chance for our voice to be heard. And whether or not they choose to listen is irrelevant. We're here. We're going to have a good time. We're SPs. We're suppressive people, the devil, the people with a dagger behind our back that want nothing but other people's failure we're just going to prove them wrong by just being nice and friendly and having a good time if we can make a scientologist smile that will make my day okay great all right thank you and i will update this as soon as you hear something about this uh possible reversal by scientology oh boy alex <laughs> thank you so alex, much thank Dave. you so much man all right good luck thank you